First, we're going to create a new project using the CreateCLJS app build tool. We'll name it Twitter Frontend. Next, we'll start a dev server. Once that is done, let's go ahead and delete all the files that was generated by this tool. And we will just have core.cl.js and uh, we will show hello Twitter that is on the browser. Right. Next, we'll go to shadow CLGS and delete all the builds except for the app build. And we will also update the version of reagent. We don't need dev cards and we don't need E2E -E test and cards. Once that is done, we'll go to package.json and on the dependency section, as you can see, the React version is 16 and uh, what we need to do is we need to upgrade to version 17. So that's what we will do next. On the terminal, we'll, we will uninstall React, React DOM and create a React class. And once that is done, we will install React and React DOM again so that we have the latest version. So React, yarn, act, react, react DOM. Once that is done, we have to restart the server. And also on the core.clgs, instead of reagent core.render, we have to do reagent dom.render, reagent dom slash render. Next, let's go to the terminal and commit our changes. Now that we have a basic project available, the next step is to integrate Tailwind and Tailwind GIT into our project. So Tailwind CSS is a, a, a CSS framework for for rapid development of, of web applications. Um, so let's first install Tailwind CSS as a dev dependency. Once we have installed that, we're going to install cross env as a dev, dev dependency as well. Next, we're going to install post CSS run pm uh, npm run all as well as auto prefixer and finally we're going to install the tailwind css just in time compo uh, compiler that was just released once that is done we have to set up the tailwind so we, we're going to create tailwind config.js and copy paste some code once we have the Tailwind config set up, we're going to set up the um, PostCSS config. And here we have two plugins right now, Auto Prefixer and Tailwind CSS. So for now, let's see how the old Tailwind CSS works. That's why we have the JIT um, compiler um, disabled. So we also have to create Tailwind.css file and copy the base files for Tailwind, the base components and the utilities that comes with the Tailwind CSS. Now on the public uh, directory, we'll delete the style.css file because uh, this will get generated by PostCSS. Now that we have delight, let's deleted the PostCSS, uh, the style, let's bundle our style. So as you can see, it has been bundled and the bundle size is 3.66 megabytes. Uh, it's a lot of, uh, that's that's quite big. See, as you can see, we have also added a watch script called cross nv tailwind, uh, tailwind mode to watch. And then we said, um, so we'll also, uh, uh, next we'll add a script to compile our um, uh, CSS. And if you run yarn post CSS watch, this will compile our CSS code. And as you can see, the, the size is still 3.7. Now, instead of using the, the old version, let's use uh, Tailwind CSS. So as you can see, this is the generated file. So instead of the Tailwind CSS, use, let's use the new compiler and let's run watch again. As you can see now, the file has decreased to 10 kilobytes. And let's make sure that we have the watch dash w added to our post CSS watch mode, so that when we run this uh, run the script, it watches. Okay. Once this is done, we're going to test the uh, the new JIT compiler. So let's change on Tailwind CSS and see. Um, 
the, if the style.css gets changed. So as you can see, as soon as we change tilman.css, since the, the post CSS is watching our changes, the style.css uh, gets generated on the fly. So if you comment out everything, nothing gets generated, right? Because the whole idea of Tailwind um, just-in-time compiler is that code gets generated on demand. Now let's go ahead and look at more important examples. So for now, we're just going to look at one file, the core.cljs. And uh, let's see if we can add some style on our core.cljs file and uh, see if the style gets generated and see how the style gets generated. So let's try to add some padding into our div. So we'll add some padding and we'll call p y dash three. So we're going to have, so as you can see, the style was automatically generated. So this is pretty cool, right? Uh, let's try adding another style. Let's add some horizontal padding. So p x three. And if you hit save, as you saw that the file, the style file was generated. Next, uh, what we are going to do is we're going to start our server again. And as you can see, the file, um, we see hello Twitter. Uh, let's revert back everything that we have um, back to what it was. Um, so now that we know how the Tailwind compiler works, let's add, um, let's go ahead and um, change our scripts. So we will add app watch as well as the app server. And we will rename the, the scripts. We'll also add a couple of post CSS scripts to build and release. So when you want to generate the style for production, we're going to run post CSS colon release. What this will do is this is going to minimize the CSS file, which you will see shortly. So when you are in release mode, you need to make sure that the node environment is set to production. And let's also remove the verbose watch because we, we don't want to watch on the release mode. And for build, the tailwind mo mode should be set to build. And watch, it's watch. Tailwind. And on the build, we also, we don't want to watch the, the process. Okay. So now this is done, let's go ahead and let's go back to tailwind.config and, um, you know, Make sure that we have uncommented. Okay, so now let's try to um, uh, build the, the, let's try to release the post CSS. And as you can see, the, the style of CSS was not minified. So in order to minify the CSS file, we can use CSS Nano. CSS Nano is a plugin for post CSS that basically minifies, um, minimizes the CSS file. So as you can see, um, you need to install this. So we'll say yarn add CSS nano and we'll save it as a dev dependency. Next we'll go to post CSS config and add it uh, in the plugin section. Once we have that, we'll run our script again. And this time the minimization technique should work. Minification. So right now the size is 10k kilobytes. Let's run yarn process post CSS release, and now the file size has decreased to 3 kilobytes. Three kilobytes. There you go. And that's it. That's all that we need to know about uh, Tailwind. Next, we will also add change our start script so that when we run start, it's going to watch the CSS as well as it's going to start the server, the front-end server. Let's connect to our socket REPL. And that's it. We have successfully implemented Tailwind and the Tailwind just-in-time compiler. Uh, next, let's go ahead and, and commit all of our changes to Git. And let's say add Tailwind plus just-in-time compiler. Okay, now ne next we are ne now next uh, we are ready to move on to the app sync and AWS Amplify. So for that we need to install AWS Amplify and AWS Amplify React. 
Once that is done, we'll go to app.core namespace and we will require the newly installed package. We'll say AWS Amplify and we will import the Amplify. Once that is done, we need to create a config file. So I won't be showing what I have in my config file because I don't want to expose the keys, but I, I will show you how the config should look like. So this is how the config should look like. Um, it has a one key called AWS, and inside that AWS you have the region, user pool ID, user pool web client ID, mandatory sign-in, which is set to true, the GraphQL endpoint, as well as the authentication type. So this is all related to AppSync, so you should already have a AppSync application running. So let's require that into the app.core namespace. And now next we need to initialize the uh, Cognito user pool as well as we need to initialize our AppSync app on our Clojure script. So the first function configure user pool, well, it configures the user pool so that we can, um, we can log in and uh, we can log in using Cognito. Next is the, on the line 16, you have app config and it has three properties, the, the GraphQL endpoint, the region and the authentication type. And this is needed to, to set up um, AppSync. Once that is done, we'll also add the config to our git ignore file because we don't want to expose this information. We'll also import auth module from AWS Amplify and we'll, we will use it to sign in. Uh, auth exposes a single method called sign in, which, ex which expects username and password, and then it returns a promise. So for now, we'll just log the response coming from this method. So in the common block, we will we will call this function, and we'll try to test it. And um, for testing purposes, I'm going to add uh, my username and pass password into this env config CLGS. So let's test this. So n right now we get an error, right? We haven't uh, configured Amplify correctly. So we haven't con configured it. So let's go ahead and configure our AWS Amplify. So we'll write one another function called configure app. This is just going to con call the configure method from Amplify and we're going to pass the app config. Next, we're going to call these two functions, configure app and configure user pool in the main function. Now, if we re refresh our our web browser, uh, uh, now these two function runs, and now let's try to run this function. Again, we should get an error because now we get a different error. It says it says username cannot be empty. Let's try to enter a username and let's see what happens next. Again, we should get an error because our password is empty. And if you scroll down, there you go. It says a 400 response because our custom auth is not enabled for the client. So it's a very um, broad error message. But we are getting an error message, so, so it, it, it is working. Next, let's try to log in using the right credentials, right? So as you can see, now the response is successful. So as you can see, um, this is how you log in using AWS Amplify, and this is how you set up an Amplify app um, and a GraphQL app. Um, yeah, so, so that's about it. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to see what, what are all the things that we have made changes. So we have changes on the git ignore, package JSON, core CLGS, as well as the config. So as you can see, these are all the things that we have added. We have added how to configure app sync. So let's commit all everything. And uh, and that's about it. So this is how you get started with Clojure Script and AWS and Tailwind. I hope you enjoyed this this episode and uh, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you.